Hello, good afternoon. This is Dr. Stephen Evans from OutClick Magazine. I am really excited about today's show. We have Joe Cox, who is the CEO of the Museum of Discovery and Science, Andy Rogro from Island City Stage, who is the Artistic Director and Board Member, Marty Childers from Island City Stage, who is the Managing Director, and the fabulous, funny, and wonderful Dixie Longate, America's favorite Tupperware lady. Welcome, everybody. Hi. Good to be here. How's it going? Uh, I can't imagine being anywhere else except the other places I can imagine being, but I can't be in some of those places on account of the fact that some of them places is closed. <laughs> Otherwise, that's good. We were laughing before the show. You have a wonderful show. Marty, tell us the dates of the show. First of all, let's get that out of the way, the dates of the show and how they can find tickets. September 8th and September 9th at 7.30 at the Museum of Discovery and Science at their IMAX Theater. Um, we're going to be featuring Dixie's Happy Hour. We are so excited about this. It's going to be a great time. You can get tickets at islandcitystage.org, and it's just under, um, <clears throat> under shows, and you'll see Dixie's Happy Hour, and you can get tickets there. They're $100. This is a fundraiser for both us and mm -hmm. the Museum of Discovery and Science, and it's kind of our foray back into getting open back up again, and so we're excited about it. Well, I'm very excited for you. I know uh, Mods and the uh, Island City Stage are such great partners. Dixie, you're hilarious. Uh, give us, go, go ahead, uh, give us your elevator speech quick. Uh, Marty and Andy, give us your elevator speech about what is Island City Stage? Uh, what kind of shows you put on? Your quick uh, synopsis on that. Andy? So Island City Stage is a professional regional theater focusing on LG plus issues and characters. Uh, we're heading into our ninth season, and uh, yeah, so we've been serving Milton Manors for almost a decade. Very good. You all put on amazing shows. We've done interviews with both of you all, and you all put on amazing shows. Joe, and you are the present CEO of the Museum of Discovery and Science, also yeah. called MODS, across the street from the Broward Center downtown. Give us your elevator speech about what MODS is, if it's even possible to condense all you all do into uh, just 40 seconds. That, thank you, Steve. We do one or two uh, really exciting things. And right now, during the pandemic, we've really been focused on connecting people to science virtually. And so over the last few months, we've really created some amazing virtual opportunities from birthday parties to hurricane preparedness events to supporting our school system any way we can in virtual learning. So it really has been a, a fascinating time to rethink how we engage with the community. But ultimately, we're all about connecting people to inspiring science and apparently hosting a really fun um, <laughs> events in our IMAX theater. And uh, so we're excited about what we're going to be doing with Dixie and Island City Stage because it's a way to really rethink a space which isn't being used right now. All right, the show, tell us the dates again, August, Marty? Oh, September the 8th September. and 9th. September. It's a Tuesday and a Wednesday. A Tuesday and a Wednesday, all right. Dixie, tell us about your show. I have seen your show in person. I've seen other places. And before we we were talking, I said, you've got to stop because you're making me laugh. i got to do the intros. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> well, look, I, so I've been uh, – a lot of people, uh, I'm very lucky a lot of people see my show. I'm, I've been selling Tupperware for, oh gosh, almost 19 years. And then I developed it into a show and I took it to New York, got a lot of attention there. And then I started touring it and the show's called Dixie's Tupperware Party. And so I've now been on tour for 12 years and then up until Corona hit and then everything stopped. So me and everybody else in the theater world, we just don't have any opportunities anymore. I had bookings all the way to December 2021 and all of those went away. And so I thought, you know, look, you look at Taylor Swift and she's like, I'm bored. I'm not doing anything. I'm going to like an album and drop it on a Tuesday because that's who she is. And I thought, you know, let me do the same thing. But what I will just and, uh, so uh, Andy came to me and I've known, I've been, I've been out in the city many times. And I love the, the programs they put on. And um, so they said, you know, Andy came to me and said, what are you doing? And I was like, 
drinking. And he said, um, do you want to <laughs> yeah. I said, Oh my lord, that is the nice game seeing it. So I thought, you know, when I've been uh when I've been in my trailer for the last couple of months, I've been just connecting with my audience that I have around the world by doing these little virtual happy hours. So I'll get online, I'll make a drink, I'll talk to people, I'll, I'll come up with a topic or something that's going on, and I'll just I'll, I'll riff about it and, and share things with people. And it's become really fun and engaging with people. And I have thousands of people from all over the world that will get on the streams each day I do them and just kind of chat with me. So it's been fun. And I said, you know, what if I take that and sort of shape it into a whole show and do it as a fun little um, little fundraiser. And this is a great fundraiser for both the organizations because obviously this, since all theaters are shut down, Island City hasn't been able to do their regular scheduled season. And then like you're talking about in the Museum of Science, they don't have the opportunity, you know, there's everything was shut down at first. There's a lot of social distancing and then the big IMAX theater, they don't have the opportunity to let people in to see movies yet. So they partnered with us to say, let's do something fun. And I was like, I can do this thing with a pole with my leg and then a scooter. But they're like, no, 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 something that doesn't take as much interest. <laughs> like, oh, okay. So, um, so I said, all right, let me put together this little, this my little show about happy hour. And it's it's about it's about drinking and finding fun things within drinking, but it's also about finding the things to be happy about. Because I think a time like this really tests us because you have people that are are obviously very frustrated and obviously very scared and you have a lot of people that are just sort of going okay well, how can i take this opportunity and spin it into something different and we have so many people you'll talk to and they keep saying you know oh i can't wait to go back to the way it was and i think why go back when you can move forward yeah. and a lot of things are going to change. That's just the way they are. So better to embrace those things and find out how they can be part of your life and how you can participate in the world around you in a new and inventive and creative way. And I've been inspired by so many artists that have been doing different things this way. And I thought, you know, let me be able, because I have an opportunity to do it, because I have the free time right now, and it's an excuse to get me away from my kids. I thought, yeah, <laughs> this would be a good time to put something together and then yeah. give this back to both organizations that need some fundraising coming in. Yeah. You've done a fantastic job keeping the laugh going and keeping the shows. I've watched many of your shows and I will admit that I've had some, a couple of hard days and I've tuned in and watched your shows and laughed and it's picked me up. And I just want to let you know how much I appreciate what you have done and how much work it has been for you to keep going. I've got a little surprise. I want to show you. Um, I dug out a couple of things. I've been to a couple of your shows. I have two very proud possessions. This is one that I went to one of your shows. Yes, and, uh, and I signed your seal. And now every time you ring your seal, you think of me. Appreciate oh, that. Oh, I, I don't just have one. I don't just have one. I've got it from two of your shows. Jesus, you are good people. You know what? I've got it from two of your shows. And I see you've got your name tag from the show inside that bowl. That is so I've got funny. my name tag from inside the bowl. I'm going to steal your thunder. And it's one yeah. of those that if I can pop it out. I know you pop it out and then you put something in it and then you put it in your mouth and you feel better about your day because you have something nice in your mouth. <laughs> so I've got two of them. I, they're hilarious shows. Yeah. Well, I appreciate yeah. it. Well, this is a whole new one. This is something that no one's ever seen before that I'm working okay. on. It's going to be fun. You know, my, my goal is because, look, I've been lucky enough to travel around the world and do fun things. And, and this is an opportunity right now for me to be able to give back to some people that really need it because I know there are a lot of people suffering. And it feels like today that things are kind of getting back to a, a new normal. That think that people are, are sort of going about their business and you see people outside. But what people don't realize is sure there are people in restaurants, sure there are people out and about doing stuff and shopping, but it's not back to normal. I mean, there's still things, a lot of people are still suffering. A lot of organizations still don't have funding coming in. So if I can do a little bit to help some great organizations in this community, I'm going to be happy to do it. And again, it gets me away from my kids. I get to take my kids and be like, I'm not home. Can they go away? And that was really good for me. Good for you. Good for you. Joe, tell us about how uh, things are going to be set up. You've got everything organized. Give us a synopsis of how uh, the social distancing and all that's going to be set up. Yeah, so we, we've been really uh, careful and thoughtful about social distancing. You know, you've been to the museum a ton of times, Stephen. It's just enormous. It's huge. So we've got plenty of space for social distancing. And what we're doing in the IMAX theater is usually it seats 300 people, but we're gonna limit it to 100 seats. There's six foot worth of distance between everyone. We're gonna be blitzing the place with electrostatic sprayers before the screening. So okay. you'll come in, everything's been newly sanitized. You'll have plenty of space between you and the person next to you. So come with someone you wanna sit with and we'll organize this space. 
tons of space, tons of room. Um, and so we're really excited about being able to do something in this amazing space. Oh. And imagine seeing Dixie's face on a 60 foot tall screen. Oh, that uh, is the I, best thing I've ever heard anybody say about my face. And I'm going <laughs> that, that, That's a lot of eyeshadow. I don't know if I can handle all that, but I'll be prepared for it. <laughs> that, that's exciting. That's exciting. Well, we're going to we put the website up there. Is there anything else we need to know about the show or um, Dixie, anything else you want to tell us? You know what? Come have a good time. It's a great organization, a great fundraiser for two great organizations. So, you know, my goal is to make people, like you said, and you've been so gracious to say, it, I, my goal is to lift everybody up a little bit, put a little smile on them, and get people to think a little differently and look at the opportunities in front of them rather than all the stuff they've left behind. So, hopefully, this little show will pe put people in that good mood to go out and hit the ground running and and open up for a, the new the what will be a great 2020, the rest of 2020, because we can't write this whole year off as saying like, oh, it's all bad. We got to look for opportunities to find the greatness in it. And so that's what my hope is to, to just lift everybody up a little piece. Thank you. I know you personally, and I know that you speak from the heart when you say that. And I know that's true. And that's one of the things I appreciate about you is that you actually mean what you say. And I, I appreciate that about you. Oh, thank you, sweet angel. I print that is so nice to you. That just fills my heart up. You make me want right. to rip up on your leg like a dog looking for peanut butter. You're so sweet. <laughs> Marty, did you have a comment? Yeah, I just wanted to mention that it wouldn't be possible without support from Palin Insurance Agency. Okay. Joe, Palin, all the guys over there are amazing. And I just want to say thank you for sponsoring this event. Exactly. And and they and they are so involved in our community. Yes. We appreciate you. Thank you. Yes, thank you for mentioning that. Joe's been one of our great partners, and I've been friends with Joe forever. So thank you for mentioning that. Well, this is fun. Is there anything else we need to, to talk about? Are we good? No, Stephen, I just wanted to say thank you to you and OutClick for always being so supportive. And Dixie, thank you. Um, I'm looking forward to this. And to everyone watching, you know, people ask all the time with everything going on, how can we help the arts? How can we help support cultural institutions? This is a way that you can write a check for $100, have a great night out to support two wonderful cultural organizations we have here in town. The arts needs your support now more than ever. And whether it's supporting Island City Stage, supporting the museum, or supporting any cultural institution, now is the critical time to do it because cultural institutions all around our country need your help. So thank you for doing this. And it's gonna be a great night. It's going to be great. Dixie, leave us with the funny story. I know you're always good and impromptu. You got any funny stories you could leave us oh with? Oh, my Lord. I got so many of them. Well, I was, uh, my, uh, my son had a, um, my son graduated from the fifth grade. I didn't know. And uh, a neighbor lady <laughs> called me up and she said, oh, my Lord, well, are you going to go to graduation? I was like, oh. Okay. And so I went, I, like I, everybody there was going to do little, this little carnival with it. And I didn't realize that. So, and they, they're like, you bring something to drink. So I, and so I, I thought that they meant lemonade. I brought jello shots. I didn't think there was a problem with that. And she's like, oh, you can't bring them into the carnival. And I was like, well, you're supposed to put them in back in my car. And you know what happens in a hot car in July with a bunch of jello shots that don't end well. So no. But, and so all the kids was playing different games, you know, but they had to play them socially distantly. And I, they put up socially distant twister. Okay. <laughs> you know what games is don't work in any way? That one. That one. It's like having a socially distant key party. You can't do it. It don't work. You got it. No, the game is sort of, it's baked into that cake. You know what I mean? But we had a good time. And then my little one, oh my God, one hermit crab said a little thing. You know how when you play games, they give you crap? Oh Lord. Okay. Well, we got a crab. <laughs> You know what it's like to live in a trailer with a woman who wears high heels and their hermit crabs that get on the carpet? Oh, Lord, it don't go well. It's like a landmine trying to jump around things. It's like having gophers right in the middle of your front yard. You can't get around them. Oh, Lord. Fortunately, I didn't hear no crunching. So that was helpful. We can't find them. They're little, but they're, they'll are they get under things. You can't get it. Even though they're slow, you never find them. So someday we might find hermit crab when we move all the furniture. I haven't found a three-year-old yet. I built these little forts out of like a bunch of my chairs and the couch and then some sheets and everything. And I put the, I'm like, it's a fort, go play. So it's been like about three weeks. I haven't seen the little one. But you know what? <laughs> if he's hungry, he'll holler. Kibble in there and hope the cat kind of pushes it near him. You know, because cats are so finicky, they throw shit. So I'm hoping like, oh yeah, put it toward the baby. And then he'll put it in his mouth and be like, that's, 
you know, you don't have any teeth, so I have to gum it because it's like a hard kind of cat food. But you know, that's how you grow and learn. That's how you. <laughs> well, this has been a joy, you guys. Yeah. This is just a small sample of what you're going to get to see at the show. We're gonna, I'm going to pop this back in here mm -hmm. so you can see it. It's islandcitystage.org. September Tuesday, September sixth, Wednesday, September. I know it's September eighth. I'm sorry. Uh, Wednesday, September ninth. I'm getting old. I got to read the screen. <clears throat> Um, but yes, get your tickets. It'll be a great show. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Right, right. All right. Have a happy, happy, have a happy afternoon and a happy hour. Absolutely. You as well. Always have a glass close by because you never know when you're going to have to put something in your mouth. That's <laughs> right. Have a good one. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you, kids. <laughs>